Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And I think the hardest thing in long-term care will be the financial impact it could have on the bottom line with the rug scores. And they're going to have to recalculate those around this maintenance program because there's such a big difference between your top, your, even your medium rugs to a maintenance program. And your maintenance program has, you have to show that it needs a skilled professional to guide it. Okay, you can't just write it and turn it over to a restorative aid. You have to show that the professional person needs to guide this maintenance program. And that's the only way Medicare will cover it. And you still ultimately only get the 100 days. You never get any more than that. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Our third case is a gentleman, 85 years old, who's living at home with his wife. His wife is providing all of the care to her husband. Happy marriage. He's got Parkinson's disease, some arthritis, high blood pressure. Um, and he's on Coumadin because he's had atrial fibrillation. The wife is maintaining the home, doing the cooking and the shopping. Um, they have a little bit of help brought in to help the wife. She's got her cleaning lady coming in, but she can do it all. She doesn't need any help. Um, thank you very much, but we're doing fine here. And she caters to her husband, and he's very happy sitting in his lounge chair watching sports and um, very pleased that his wife can provide all of the care. He became ill. He was hospitalized for urinary sepsis. He had a change in mental status again related to an infection. He was dehydrated. These all go hand in hand. And he was in charge of taking his medications. And we all know when you have a little bit of confusion, you sometimes don't take your medications the way that they should be taken. Sometimes you can take too much. Sometimes you can take more than you actually need to take. Um, because of memory loss. And he did have a decline in his Parkinson's disease. He became weaker and again became deconditioned. He had the three nights hospital stay and went to a rehab with the goal of returning home. So at the rehab, again, the goal is to get him back to his baseline so he can return home with his wife. In this case, as we know with many Parkinson's patients, to be, um, to have an illness and end up not being as active as they were one day, laying in bed for some consecutive days, that stiffness and rigidity just multiplies. And put on top of that, having an arthritis, he's basically become immobile in a very short period of time due to his disease process. He's going to have IV meds for antibiotics for the infection and hydration. The Parkinson's medications are so important that they're done timely. When you're given a DOPA medication, the brain is waiting for that medication and it controls their tremors and their rigidity to a point. So him getting off schedule, not remembering or taking too much has really thrown his system out. So then we'll start again getting him back on his schedule and try to get him moving. The mental status evaluation will be to determine if there were any changes in his memory that it was just indeed the infection that caused it. He's also going to have to be watched closely. He takes Coumadin. He's on IV antibiotics. The INR, his blood level for clotting can go all over the place. So they're going to be watching that. He's going to need some pain management. He's really stiff. He's very rigid. He hasn't been moving. He's going to need PT and OT. OT to get him back into the movements of getting dressed, helping him with a little bit of energy conservation so he's not fatiguing as much. 
And I think that PT is going to be working with him, getting his strength back, getting him mobile again. And it, it's going to take a little while to do that. I think all in all that um, whether or not he would end up going back to his baseline or going home, or you could take this as a case of someone being in the long-term care setting on Medicaid, has gotten sick, went out to the hospital, come back to the long-term care setting. They are going to use some skilled days for him. Because he's on Medicaid, he still needs to have that maintenance program. He still falls under GMO. And I, this is my own personal opinion to say this. I don't think it'll take long for the state to be monitoring to make sure that they weren't violated against the GMO Sibelius Act because they're having to pay quicker if, if they're not kept on their Medicare benefit. So that's just, again, the documentation. It's very key. You need to remember it's the unique condition of the person that drives their skilled care along with its complexity. And those need to be determined. The complexity issues, the reason they're skilled, needs to be documented on. The rest is very important. And it needs to be written in nurses' notes, but those skilled nurses' notes need to be talking about their skilled care and their maintenance that's being done to keep them on their Medicare benefit. Uh, so a question. Suppose the wife drops dead. So, uh, so which, you know, those it, all happen, right? I, I always tell my, always tell my clients who are, try, do, who are exactly in this situation, I said, you're not doing your husband any favors if you drop dead, right? If you kill yourself, suppose she drops dead. In that situation, he's not going back home, right? right? So, so he's going to be, so in many of these cases, he's going to be staying in the same facility, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, though, given those symptoms mm -hmm. and the fact that he's continuing to decline from the Parkinson's, is there a case that can be made that while he's still there, right, that he can be there through his 100 days because of the need for the skill services that are being described here in order to keep him from deteriorating? I think that it will be determined by how well he, is, he, um, he does with the infection because if he has any if the infection hasn't cleared and he needs another round of antibiotics, that's a reason to stay on skilled benefits. I think as long as he's continuing to make progress, and the goal again was if he was walking independently, walking with a walker, he needs to return to that baseline. Physical therapy needs to work on that. How long that will take? Could he reach 100 days? Yes, it's possible. Is it possible he does it in 80 days? That's possible too but he could reach 100 days based upon his d diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Other questions? It really is, as Linda said, the uniqueness of the condition of, the, of each person that drives their skilled care needs. Um, and each person is an individual, and their, their plan of care has to be based upon that. <laughs> How bad is that? So when to appeal? So one of, one of the issues that I think is going to show up here a lot is, so if you're the nursing home, you're seeing the possibilities here under GMO in terms of whether, whether or not the person is going to qualify, but you're nervous about it still because you're concerned from the nursing home's perspective, you don't want to get an audit, right? You don't want to get this case knocked back or you don't want a handful of these cases to get knocked back and all of a sudden they're doing a general audit of your facility and when they're coming in to audit your facility, they're not just looking at this, right? They're not just looking at GMO. They're looking at everything. They're looking at whether you're complying with the HIPAA regulations. They're looking at all kinds of stuff. So the question is, you know, what do you do in this case? I, I, and, I, and I guess I'm, I'm mentioning this because here the answer isn't clear. And I think a lot of us as lawyers are trying to figure this out. Is, is there a way that you can be or that we can all be encouraging appeals on these cases by the uh, person who is living in your facility, right? Because the issue is typically a lawyer isn't, it, 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 so that you can be doing, doing your notice to those folks saying, 
we're terminating you under Medicare because we don't think that you're, you know, that, that you're qualified, right? But you know, understanding that it, in, in telling them, as you're now telling them, we'll continue to provide the services, but only on private pay, right? But understanding that they've got somebody that they know that who knows what they're doing, who's going to be starting to go through the administrative appeals process, because the, the basically the the numbers regarding administrative appeals is that the, at the first level of, of appeal, typically um, the the the, uh, the uh, MAC gets upheld, right? But at the higher levels of appeal, the 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 level of of of, of success of appellants on appeal is about eighty percent. It's like really really high, except that they've got to be willing to go through that appeal process. So I'm just saying, I realize, I, we all realize for that from you know, taking our, our elder law hats off, or our, our client hats off and looking from the facilities perspective, that there were really strong reasons why facilities don't want to be taking a risk in these cases, that the case is going to get knocked back, right? Um, we are working on, as lawyers, trying to figure out how to deal with that, and also trying to figure out whether we should be working consciously with geriatric care managers and other professionals in the field to make sure that they do those kinds of appeals, that they do the advocacy and the appeals. Because economically, it's going to be extremely difficult for these patients to pay attorneys at attorney rates to do this stuff, and the attorneys don't know the stuff. The attorneys don't know the medical piece of this, which is key to this appeal. So that's kind of where things are going. Uh, finally, that's the goal that we always tell our clients, and that's the goal for everybody. The goal of life is to sleep well at night. Um, so if none of this made, in, made any difference to you, that's okay. If it did, we hope this was helpful. Um, this um, program, the reason why we're taping, and all of the ones that we tape, go up on my YouTube channel. So if you hear some of somebody in another facility that may be interested in just kind of thinking about this, please just refer them to our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, we also tell all of our clients that uh, uh, one of the goals of the, our exercise, because so many of our clients are, are, are about dealing with Alzheimer's, is supporting the Alzheimer's Association. Because in the long run, we'd like this stuff to just go away. And so Frank and Mary, my friends Frank and Mary, are actually sponsoring a team at the Alzheimer's Walk. So if you want to walk with us in Worcester uh, in September, we'd love to see you. Any other questions? Thank you very much for all for coming. Thank Please you. let us know if you've got any follow-up questions. Thank you for putting this together. Thank you very much.